Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our Animal Kingdom Season 5, <laughs> Episode 11 review. As Coco is a member of the Animal Kingdom, she felt the need to grace us with her presence in this video. She loves to be part of the Animal Kingdom video. She seems to come to these ones more than any other. <laughs> she knows. She, this dog is probably smarter than all of us. But you know what? Well, really, she is. She sleeps all day. She has a great life. But She tells us every day that she is smarter than us. That's accurate. Okay, so You're this... also an angel okay, on Earth. Okay, you angel on Earth. Well, while we deal with this angel on Earth here, we have to talk about dealing with a dead body, dealing with a new operation as introduced by Frankie. This yeah. was an eventful episode. Yeah, this was a really good episode. There was a lot of stuff that was happening. We're gearing up towards a big heist, which I know a lot of us have been waiting for. We've had, you know, the safe heist and we had the plane heist, but it, we're, we're real deep into the season here and they've been sort of very quick heists. This one feels like it is going to need the few episodes to build up to get to the big heist. I'm very excited. I am really ready to actually get to this because it feels like this is one of the problems I've had this season is it feels like we have kind of like a lot of one and done stories where mm -hmm. We go in, we see the Cody's deal with something, and then we just forget about it and move on to the next thing. Like, there hasn't been a lot of continuity this season. Like, Pamela, where'd she be at? <laughs> I thought she was going to be such a huge part of this season that there was, maybe she was going to give them more jobs. Maybe there was going to be more of a relationship. Like, why did Smurf leave her entire sort of inheritance to her? And then, poof. Yeah. Like, she's just completely gone. Like, nothing. Nothing about the dude who Pope has left out in the middle of the desert, either. There's been some inconsistencies with this season. We've been very honest with you guys all season. But if you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are here every Sunday night after the episode talking about Animal Kingdom. Okay, this this is what I, I love the most about this because there's... There's a couple of storylines that I think we've all established that I'm all in on. I'm all in anytime we have a safe going through a window. That's, That's right. I am also all in on any storyline that is, we have a dead body, what do we do with it? Because for some yeah. reason, this is always fun. I wasn't sure if this was going to be kind of a little bit of a quick cleanup or a couple scenes. They really spent a good chunk of this episode getting rid of this dead DEA agent. <laughs> and I really appreciated that because when you really look at the situation yeah. that the Cody's were left in by Chadwick, the cop, <laughs> it was just, it was so massively big. So not only do they have a dead DEA agent. They have a specific dead DEA <laughs> agent who that morning raided Darren's bar and now he's dead in the same bar. And on top of it, then now they have to deal with this Chadwick cop who has clearly gone in a way that he wants to make sure that the Cody's cannot get rid of him. Yeah. He's killed this DEA agent in Darren's bar in front of them. They are all part of it now. He's keeping the gun. He's basically like, you can't get rid of me now. Also, my services, they've been raised to five grand now. So that's where we all are. It's kind of a, I'll keep this gun for safekeeping you know, i.e. blackmail, <laughs> I'm going to make sure you guys continue to work with me. It's such a sticky situation that I was glad to see that it took a while to clean up. It wasn't just a scene and there was like, all right, moving on to the next thing. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack here, starting with the fact that Chadwick... You're going to die before the end of this season. I'm just sorry. You really think you're going to get one over on all of the Cody boys? Yeah, that was one of the interesting conversations, too, between Jay and Pope. Because Jay is a psychopath. And yeah. I thought he was going to, at that point, be like, he, just got, he has to die. Yeah. But he actually thought that there was going to be a way to possibly negotiate with him. And of all the Cody boys... Jay is the one that will lean into negotiation if he has to. But when it's really serious, he will chop off someone's hand. But <laughs> on the other hand, he was like, no, like, no, this cop is just going to have us under his thumb for the rest of our lives. Like, this cop has to die. Yeah. 
Jedwick, I'm sorry. You're you're gonna you're gonna go at some point. I don't know how, I don't know when, but the the other scene that gave me pure joy in this whole storyline was when they started to do their negotiations with the po disposing of the body, and the guy's like, who is it? And they're like, oh, it's a DEA agent, and he's just like, bye, I have no interest in this anymore. Yeah, I totally get it, and he's like, oh, you know, a DEA agent is harder to get rid of, it's harder to deal with sort of thing, and that's why I appreciate that this episode did take as many scenes and as much time as it took to really show how hard it is to deal with the death of a DEA agent. Because most shows don't do that. No. They kind of just gloss over it and it's like, oh, we'll just throw them in the river and it's all good. And then for some reason <laughs> it is all good. And so it was interesting. I, I'd never really seen it in depth like this, even with like Pope pulling the bullet casing out of the wall to be like, he may have the gun, but we have the bullet. I'm like, wow, okay, they're really thinking this through. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a reminder that these guys are very, very smart. The, the irony in all of this is, you know, you mentioned Pamela and where in the world she is earlier. I feel like... The DEA agent's <laughs> severed hand got almost as much screen time as Pamela has gotten in the past few weeks. Yeah, I mean, that whole scene with the, you know, oh, one of you guys has to chop off the hand. Of course, I thought that it was going to be Pope, but Pope was really testing Jay to really... He knows that there's something that's off with Jay. Yes. So when he's like, yeah, have, have at it. And Jay, no problem. Just cut it off and here we go. I appreciated the conversation later that Pope had with Jay, where he was kind of like, listen, we did not have the same childhood growing up. Yeah. Like me and Julia, very different. So it explains why we kind of are where we are. But you did have some kind of a childhood before everything really went sideways for you. So we're not the same. <laughs> it this was, This conversation was so great because it also... I know this is going to be a real surprise to a lot of people out there who have been watching our reviews, but it also actually justified the Smurf flashbacks this week. It's like they actually had a purpose on the show. Yeah, and, you know, we've been, like, not the biggest fan of the flashbacks and had sort of was hoping that maybe they'd be their own show. Yeah. I'm a fan of them when they tie in, and I'd say they've tied in maybe 50%, like maybe 40%, but they completely tied yeah. Tied in to this whole thing, so let's get into the flashback. Okay, the there's so there's so much good stuff here. It is in between, you know, Smurf actually deciding, okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna take out Max, but then having to take out Max in front of her kids, and even like the dichotomy between like, oh, here is how young Pope is reacting, and here is how young Julia is reacting. It was so sad. These two actors are so, so good. I mean, yeah. they're really, really good. They, uh, like, they made that scene where, with everything that was going on, of course, with Max yeah. and, you know, choking their mom and threatening their mom and holding a gun to their mom, where, you know, you had Julia, you could see, you know, she's looking away. He, she was told to look away. Pope is watching. He's not having that. He's straight up. I'm going to make sure my mom is okay. I'm going to watch this. I have to know what's going on. And Pope is still like that. Like it really did make that connection. And then later, of course, we saw Pope jump up, stab him in the leg, help his mom. She ended up murdering Max in front of her children. Julia not dealing with it very well. Andrew dealing with it much better, but it definitely made a connection even closer with his mom. And you could see Julia on the couch noticing that she's kind of her connection with her mom is getting further and further apart while Andrew and his mom getting closer and closer. It just, it does such a good job of informing like these two characters and where these two characters end up so many years from where these flashbacks took place. But I gotta say that out of all the characters we've seen killed off on Animal Kingdom over the years, I, I may have appreciated Max's death more than it. Because Max sucks. Like, I was so happy to see Max get killed off. Bye. Yeah, like, this guy was just... 
He was a jerk. He was also just like blatantly just obnoxious. There's nothing appealing about Max whatsoever. No, he's awful. That was the saddest one he does. Yes, it really was. And I'm, you know what, young Andrew, I'm happy you get in on the action too. He was being terrible to your mom. Yeah, he was. and But it definitely shows us how it shaped Andrew from a very, very young age. And that, I mean, we have already seen sort of little bits of young Pope and some of the strangeness about him. Like we had the Eminem scene early on. We even had in this episode, he's like carving J and A in a piece of wood. I'm just like, okay, that's a little creep show. But you know, Pope was a little creep show. So yeah. it was perfectly placed. Okay, so the let's get into the height. Well, I guess like the heist origin story in this episode. I'll mm -hmm. say that there was... One part of this I was a little bit iffy about. Okay. It doesn't take away from all of it, but the whole idea of here is the guy that you go and you dump all the money on in order to dis... This, this was totally the vacuum repair guy from Breaking Bad. This was like Robert Forrester, and that is all I could think about for at least five minutes of this episode. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, he didn't really have much of a front. He was sort of just, you know in an old VA, it seemed like, and, you know, just taking the money, two guards, very inconspicuous. It just, I just, for the amount of money that's moving around, it felt like there should have been a little more security around it or an actual front like the vacuum yeah. repair guy where it's, it's just, it's not sort of like this where it's just two guys with the main guy upstairs taking tens of thousands of dollars. It, it was strange the way it was set up. However, yeah. when they started following that tracker down to the shipyard and <laughs> seeing all four of them standing up there looking at that shipyard being like, oh, F, like, <laughs> what are we going to do about this? This is going to have se serious security, like really serious security. This is going to be so difficult. I was like, here we go. Oh, yes. I love that ending too. I that was such a good cliffhanger because I, I you know I, I know I've said this before. I like Animal Kingdom the best when I can kind of imagine it in Grand Theft Auto and like I I can really imagine the shipyard heist scene where you're like having to be stealthy to not get caught and oh here come the cops and here come the bad guys, you know, brother or friend who's out to just like knock you over the head with something. Yeah, when they pulled back and they showed just how big that shipyard yeah. is, you know that there's hundreds of cameras around there. There's going to be patrol security around there. Like there's only four of them. Like they can't really hide in this situation. So I'm kind of wondering if it's going to be something where they're just like, let's just blend in in daylight and see if we can get around that. Or if they really are going to have to run around, take down camera after camera and security guard after security. <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do it, which makes me extremely excited for these next couple episodes. I have one question for the Cody boys, though, and I'm sure they would be very happy to answer it for us. Um, did you guys think that this was going to be so easy as that the money would still be there? Because, like, the moment they were like, oh, the tracker's not... He's like, no kidding, the tracker's not... Do you think they're just going to leave everything there forever? I don't know. I mean, it was kind of started to set it up that way. When Frankie showed up there, it was just two guys, yeah. and one guy sitting upstairs at a table. I was kind of like, uh... Is it going to be this easy? I was just like... Like, there's no security. <laughs> I guess, I, okay, I, I guess the thing is, if I was an actual character in this world, yeah, I, pro I probably would think that it was going to be this easy at that point. But it's like, as a viewer of the show, you know, who is totally from the outside and obviously biased, I was like, okay, nothing on this show is ever easy. Something terrible is going to happen. I'm also really glad that they do dove further into what's going on with Frankie because Frankie, we've seen her before where she was kind of rolling in money and rolling in jobs and everything was really great for her. And now she's, you know, pared down. She's in a really small apartment. She's now taken out her last 30 grand to be part of this heist. And she's asked to be an equal partner in it because she wants to just take the money and just go. And I'm glad that the Cody boys were like, yeah, you are taking quite a lot of risk. It's your Hawala. It's your money that's going mm -hmm. in. It's you that's making the connection. There is a lot of risk because if something goes awry, it's going to come back to Frankie. It's not going to come back to the Cody boys. They've never met them. 
And that's what ma- that that is what makes me excited about this moving forward because I actually have no read whatsoever on whether or not Frankie is going to make it through or not. It's like we're invested enough that if she dies, it'll be a significant death, but she's not like so essential to the show that, you know, they can't kill her off. I could really see this going either way. I'd like and I'm hoping that she's actually going to be more like actual part of the heist. Yeah. That it's not just going to be the Cody's going in, that if she's an equal partner, which, you know, she's already done her equal share, I'd like to see her be part of it. Yeah. I actually would have really liked to have seen Ren be part of it, but she's she gone. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, because I was like, it was fun when Ren was a part of the heist. Yeah, like, it was really fun. Get some other variables in there, but, you know, we're... We're feeling pretty good about this episode overall. There's one last thing I will say that I appreciated. The title was Trust the Process, which I feel like is a reference to a basketball team, the Philadelphia 76ers, that have that same slogan, and their star, Joel Embiid, his nickname is The Process. (laughs) Like, I feel like Animal Kingdom are a bunch of Embiid fans, and if that is the case, I'm not even really a Sixers fan. I just like Embiid. I salute you guys. That feels like it is probably a connection. I like to think so. I like to think so. Well, let us know. What did you guys think about Trust the Process? Do you trust... Or Trust the Process. Accents! (laughs) It all depends on where you're from, right? That's right. So let us know what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, uh, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you here next time.